Does your lease need a physical? Today on the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show, let's get it going. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everybody, my name is Mark Dolphine, Landlord Coach and host of the Landlord Coach Daily Ish Show. It is good to see you. Thanks for joining me today. So lots of stuff is going on. It is finally looking like springtime here in Indiana. It is really pretty out. My bride and I were driving through these desolate fields and she looked out and she's like, look, there's green. <laughs> and we were like, oh my gosh, what a color of nature. We didn't recognize it. It was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> but it was. It was like the fields are starting to get green and um, somewhat, there, it looks like there's life coming back. So anyway, we had a uh, last couple of days, it's been like a car wash outside, just rain coming in sideways and everything else. So it's actually nice to see some life coming back. But today we're going to talk about, does your lease need a physical? Does it need looked over? Or before we get into all the details on that, um, I would encourage you to head on over to landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. And, um, in there, there's actually, uh, you can get a copy of the million dollar lease. Um, it's, uh, I, I actually, have been convinced by some people that they wanted to buy just the lease. That was fine if they wanted to buy the lease. You can buy the lease in there for a really awesome price. Uh, just check it out. But there's other some, some there's some other um, uh, other stuff in there for free if you are are of that ilk and you don't you have a you squeeze the quarter until the eagle screams. I totally get it. So anyway, I used to be like that. Now I just I don't mind paying for stuff that is of high value. <laughs> so anyway, does your lease need a physical? All right. Well. Um, you know, I, it, it's funny that um, I, uh, as I was thinking about what exactly it was I wanted to talk about today, I was I, um, was looking on uh, some news stuff that was coming out, and uh, of course the New York late New York State legislator late legislature was uh, you know there's this in- impeachment inquiry for Governor Cuomo. And uh, I was uh, I was just typing in because there's lots of different laws that have changed, especially in the rental side of things all over the place. And it's kind of hard to keep up. I can't keep up with all the changes hardly in my own state, let alone try to do it across 50 states, uh, which is kind of my point that I'm going to be talking about here in a little bit. But anyway, um, but I'm sure, you know, for those of you who are in, in New York State, just I'm sure that New York State legislature will do right in terms of the uh, impeachment inquiry. I'm sure there won't be any, you know, any back of the room deals or anything like that, you know, anyway, um, which brings me to also governor Gavin Newsom. If you know, if you know of what's going on with that, they've only changed the, uh, recall rules on that at least, I don't know, half a dozen times. And I'm sure that's not self-serving at all. Right. Okay. Well, that's enough politics stuff. I actually am over politics. I used to be kind of that guy. And now I, I have, I have no shits to give about that anymore. So anyway, um, so does your lease need a once over once in a while? Yes, it does. And the reason why is because I was going in there looking at different things um, in California and New York, lots of, I mean, let's face it, lots of blue states tend to be not very landlord friendly and make it tough to just operate a business. So, you know, if you've got the People's Republic of New York, the People's Republic of California, you know, Oregon, Washington state, you know, it just makes it very difficult for for property owners to operate especially owner operators to own uh, own and operate their businesses you know rent caps and things like that so this is why you know <clears throat> it's really important that you stay plugged in and i had a, a recent student ask me if you know where where can they get plugged in and stay current on the local stuff the local legal stuff that comes in now you got to keep in mind there's state laws there's local you know county level laws there's city sometimes ordinances that come up, Uh, there's registration ordinances that come up. So you've got to stay plugged in as much as you possibly can, especially in your local real estate investment associations, right? So they're called RIAs, or if you are, if you have a landlord association in your area, definitely, you know, stay plugged in with those if, if you can. And most of the time, these organizations, they make very little money. I mean, if they make money at all, they're, uh, they're not making a lot. And 
they're usually set up as nonprofits. So I would really uh, suggest that you get involved in your local landlord associations, your RIAs. Um, even if, for those of you who are multifamily investors and uh, – you know, not, I mean, even if you're property managers, I would, I would recommend this, but if you are a multifamily investor, look at the national associate, national apartment association, the NAA, they have, they have chapters at every state level. Like here we have the IAA, the Indiana apartment association. Um, so there's probably one in your state, but there's probably local chapters as well. Like here in Tippecanoe County, we have the TAA, the Tippecanoe apartment association of which I was the president, I don't know, like 110 years ago, <laughs> which was, uh, which was, it, it was eye opening because I got to see a lot of different things going on and they would, you know, they let us know if there was laws coming down at the state legislature level and said, Hey, you know, this is going on. We need you to show up. We need you to tell your story. And that's the main thing, right? If when they're writing these laws, they need to hear from you. They need to know the other end of the story that it's impacting an individual. So if you're not going to be involved, guess what? You don't get to complain when things go down the pipeline, right? So this is important for you. So please pay attention. It's not about it's not about cutting a check. A lot of times it's just about showing up and telling your story. Um, the other one, if you are a property manager and you happen to be watching the show, I know there's a few property managers that watch this show. The you can check out NARPM, which is the National Association of residential property managers, and that is a really good organization as well. Uh, several of them have uh, PACs, which is political action committee funds, blah, blah, blah. They, they do all that. So they will go and lobby, you know, on your behalf if you don't ha necessarily have the time, if you are not time wealthy. But um, before, so yes, it, it's really important if you're going to give your lease the once over, that's really kind of the theme of this show. If you're going to give your lease the once over, yes, it's really, really important for you to know specifically what the laws are first and foremost. And a lot of those local landlord associations and uh, RIAs will give you, uh, th they'll tell you. I mean, a lot of time they even have leases that you can check. If, um, you know, my million dollar lease that, that, that I, that I um, offer through the site uh, at landlordcoach.com, you know, it's, it's cannot be state specific. And the ones that say that they're state specific, I don't know. A lot of times when I have reviewed those, they're so watered down. It it's like I don't know. They, they they're trying not to offend anybody on either side. I don't know if I'm going to be setting up a business. I want to stack the chips in my favor, right? I mean, don't be a jerk about it. But I mean, there's certain things, certain provisions I want to be able to put in my lease that just makes sense from a business sense, right? So that's why I'm thinking you know, you really need to have a lease that's specific to you and specific to your the business that you're running, specific to the infrastructure that you have, and specific to your processes that you have. And it also should be specific to your risk tolerance. It should also be specific to what it is you're good at, right? If you're not going to be the one, um, you know, that's going to be enforcing the lease, you want to make sure that you're not setting someone else up to fail, that's going to be enforcing the lease for you, whether that's a virtual assistant or an actual assistant or whatever, however you have that set up. So, you know, as you go through the vision infrastructure process method that I talk about in the Time Wealthy Investor, you want to have these things thought through before you have someone sign a lease that might be really hard for you to enforce, like daily late fees, for example. Daily late fees are a real pain in the neck to enforce. Um... If you're not willing to, you know, if you've got like $20 a day, that might be really hard to enforce for somebody, right? I mean, you could put $100 a day, doesn't matter. But if you make it unenforceable and you're giving someone else a flat football to try to score touchdowns with, that could be really, really tough. So again, do whatever you want. I mean, make it in alignment with, with whatever, whatever skill set, risk tolerance and infrastructure that you have set up. But I'm just saying, make it, make it so you're not setting someone else up to fail. Um, so before... I'm, you know, you have your lease turn its head and cough. <laughs> you want to make sure that you, yes, you understand the laws, but you also want to have someone else doing it, right? You don't want to have, uh, you know, you shouldn't be the one performing brain surgery on your cat because you probably don't know anything about brain surgery and you probably shouldn't be doing it. Therefore, maybe bring it to your vet <laughs> who has been trained maybe and stuff like that. But my point is, Yes, you can review your own lease in through the lens of maybe some of the legal stuff that you've picked up through courses, but you shouldn't be the one going in there and trying to carve out legal, legal language and everything else because the last thing in the world you want to do is your 
you're setting your business up and you're trying to set up this, let's face it, it's an annuity for the next 12 or 14 months or however long your lease is. And then it gets thrown out of court because it's unenforceable or flat, un, uh, it's flat illegal. And a judge will throw that, uh, throw maybe that provision out or even throw out the entire lease. So you've got to be careful. Have a, an attorney that is uh, going to look that over. Now, in terms of an attorney, now I talk about how to find an attorney in the Time Wealthy Investor, but I'm going to give you a couple quick tips. First and foremost, make sure it's an attorney that is that it, it understands specifically landlord tenant law. You don't want to have like a patent attorney look at the, you know, look it over. They're like, oh, well, it's a contract. What, what, you know, contracts are contracts. True. Contract law is pretty well straightforward, but there are certain provisions in landlord tenant cases that only a landlord tenant law who practices that continually is going to know. So if there are, for example, um, there are very specific allowances for security deposits to be returned. And if you miss that window, you're, you're hit. And in some states, you have like a penalty where you have to pay double or triple as damages because you didn't do that. So you really need to know what it is that you're looking at when you're putting putting that stuff together, right? Um, and you really want to have an attorney that is going to give you the best advice as it's related to that. So that's why I would suggest, you know, yes, definitely give give the, uh, you know, if a, if a policy needs adjusted because maybe in the previous year you had a couple of things come up and you want to adjust that, that's fine. But I would really be careful about crafting your own lease, your own lease language and make sure that you have an attorney that is skilled not only in contract law, but also in landlord tenant law that knows what they're doing and what they're talking about. Um, ideally, somebody that's in eviction court, you know, fairly regularly, <laughs> okay, because they are the ones who know that specific side of the law. So if you are interested in looking at a, a uh, in the million dollar lease, you can go over to uh, landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. You can get a copy of the lease and, you know, just uh, you can structure what is ever what is ever best for you. If you want a copy, a uh, free copy of the uh, le- the Time Wealthy Investor 2.0, uh, all I ask is you to cover shipping. I'll send it right out to you and I'll even sign it for you if you like. And that's all I have for today. If uh, one final thing, if you are looking for um, software it, so you can add, honestly run much more efficiently and effectively check out the folks over at Renaware. they have a pretty awesome software and it's designed for the mom and pop investor it is not it is not property management software that uh, you kind of have to carve out and make it your own it's actually designed for the mom and pop investor and it's the, the the cost of it is ungodly cheap so i promise you it can do a lot more than what you're doing on your Excel spreadsheets, <laughs> okay? So anyway, that's all I have for today. Please be sure to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. But most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day, have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you guys next time.